Hey, good morning. So, it's been a while since I last did an update. Um, life is busy, I work a lot, and I try to, you know, have the house in order and just generally getting into the adult life, living alone and everything is a, you know, it's a, it's a learning curve. <laughs> But I do have some updates, so I'm pretty sure I already filmed it, but I think I wanna have this in one footage. So I'm gonna show it again, um, or the first time, I suppose. I did work on the bird feeders, or bird houses. Um, I definitely think that these two won't be functional, because they are too tiny. Like, they are, um, what is it called, like hummingbird size. Uh, but this one might work. Uh, this one is damaged on purpose because I had the idea of that this would look you know it would have a cool story of uh, defending the birds from like birds of prey I think I used that word correctly um, and stuff like that and this one is just a, a regular big boy and I tried this kind of connection at the top but I think I actually prefer the regular just like growing out of it one but I prefer the ratio for this one the most so I'm gonna try to make that one but uh, bigger this is the progress that we made and also um next week uh, my grandpa said that they're gonna start the roofing on top of the house which is immaculate and in the meantime i ordered some new materials uh some of which is here uh just some like white clay um this one goes until yeah, where is it? Right, from a thousand to thousand two hundred and eighty. Um, it's from Sibelco, which is like an Italian brand. It has some like tiny chamot, um, and yeah. Otherwise, it has a very wide range of firing, which is nice. I prefer to fire things higher um, because they get more dense, and I don't know, just this elitism that. Uh, high fire is better. It is not, but you know, it is what it is. That's my uh, preference and I, I can do whatever the fuck I want, so. And I also ordered a kiln, which I am like super excited about. Um, I can't believe that this day has come. Um, it costs a fuck ton of money. Um, it's a netto 850,000 forint. I'm gonna put the rough um, exchange rate uh, for it up. And yeah, with the materials and everything, it's gonna cost nearly all of my savings, but that's fine because I saved up for this exact purpose. So about the kiln, it's gonna be like big and not big. So the inside of it is gonna be 40 by 40 by 40 centimeters, uh, which is like, pretty good size for a starting kiln I believe. The inside of it is gonna be like a lot bigger. I don't remember the width and the depth of it but it's gonna be like as tall as I am, 160. Um, it's gonna be raised from the ground of course um, and uh, it's gonna have a, a glass fiber for insulation kind of like you would have with Raku kilns um, so it's not brick um, like in fancier kilns because I didn't have money for that. And I wanted a decently sized kiln and most people use this particular maker's kiln in Hungary. Um, they had this type at my school as well. I had good experiences with it. Uh, if you maintain it, it can like last you decades and decades. So yeah, just one has to make sure that they uh, maintain their kiln and check on it regularly and stuff like that. It's gonna have, I think, a platinum like heat piece um, that checks temperature and uh, like heats up and stuff. So the, like the whole electronics part of it is like, a, I would say it's a mid-range, like it's not the super expensive one. And that's it. It's gonna be five to seven weeks until it's ready and then they're gonna deliver it to the house. Hopefully it will already have a roofing over it and then we can this fire. I already have the firing plates and the supports for the kiln. Um, so yeah, and hopefully I will have like a small batch of things that we can fire by then. 
probably not, but one can hope, right? Um, and yeah, I'm overall super excited, very happy, and I'm really looking forward to it. So, yeah. And I also um, splurged a little bit. I never really could when I was young. Um, so I decided, now that I have everything secured and I have a job, I have savings, everything, I decided to splurge on some books. I ordered three books. One of them is uh, Ship to Theseus. One of them is uh, The Secret History from Donald Hart. And I got a book on um, Nordic gardening, uh, which is a technique I'm like super passionate about. I don't know like a hell of a lot of agriculture, so take it with a grain of salt. Um, but I, I think it's a really good technique without like you don't disturb the natural um, order of the soil with like bacteria, nutrients, whatever. You just put more nutrients on top and then you plant your plants. You know, there is this uh, mycelium network in like natural forests and natural gardens and stuff like that that connects all the plants together. They've been observed to take care of each other and support nutrients when one needs uh, said nutrients. So, oh my god, I just checked the time. My tea is over. No. Hold on for a minute. Oh, my tea has been soaking for like 10 minutes now. It's gonna be really strong. All right, so, um, but back to the topic in question. Uh, so, like with this technique, you don't disturb the mycelium lines that, like, if, let's say you're in a forest, right? All trees are connected via fungus, uh, fungi, and trees communicate, and they not only communicate, but, you know, if, if you cut down a tree or a tree, um, you know, perishes, something like that, or like something happens to it and it's incapable of producing and getting its own nutrients, then nearby trees will supply said nutrients to the tree. And it's been observed that the tree can like flourish afterwards, it's been cut down and it can regrow. Um, and it's largely because of those surrounding trees. And it's, if I recall correctly, it's been observed like uh, interspecies so it's like a big line of uh, of support it's very communist of the trees i'm very excited to read about that book uh, because on spring i want to have a little bit of a garden uh, there was this guy on youtube i don't remember his name guy an old and respected gentleman he's a doctor of biology gardening something like that and he has an experimental garden uh, where he uses the same or like very similar technique where he lets the garden grow on its own. He planted his uh, plants, but he doesn't really like, I think he weeds sometimes, but, but it's like not a manicured garden and it's very functional. Like there are bushes planted so that the flow of the wind is broken and it doesn't damage newly planted plants and you know in native american tribes they use this technique when they planted corn and uh, beans and uh, pumpkins together so they would plant the corn so the bean would have like something to grow on and the bean would supply i think nitrogen to the corn and the pumpkin would cover the ground so the weeds wouldn't be able to grow and take nutrients I think you know like something like that like they would coexist and cohabit and support each other I really like that style of gardening because <laughs> because I'm a lazy person you know and I feel like it would be a lot of work to like manicure a garden and on the other hand I'd really need to do like need to learn how to garden because the house where the where the workshop will be it has a huge garden my grandparents garden and eventually it's gonna be me who will have to take care of it i always wanted to take up that responsibility to take care of it after my grandparents can't so yeah um hopefully i will be able to learn the basics uh, and experiment it out here so i can apply it to the wig garden and uh, yeah we will see I'm gonna put some more lemon in this. <laughs> <laughs>